hope you're doing lovely. I am vibing so hard with life today. Honestly, all week has been really good. I have just felt so connected with God and just felt so full of joy and peace and just really excited about the future. So I'm so excited to talk to you guys all about that and all the things that I feel like I've really learned this week from God, praise God. But before we do that, we're obviously in the kitchen today making some things and we're going to be baking some bread. I really wanted to do a Valentine's Day themed loaf. Uh, I was inspired by a girl that I follow on Instagram. Her name is Tori Stender. And when I say that out loud, it sounds wrong, but I'm almost certain that's what it is. It just, you know when you say something in your head and then you actually say it out loud and it sounds weird. Anyways, I love her account. I will link it below. Y'all should go follow her this week and maybe last week as well. She was making maple syrup. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. I can't wait for the day that I get to do that. It looks crazy simple. You obviously need a maple tree and you need it to be the right temperature. I forget what she said, like frozen at night, but not frozen during the day, that kind of in between weather. And then you just tap the tree, you collect the sap and then you cook the sap down into syrup. Oh my gosh, the whole process was so inspiring. And she also lives quite close to me in my area, which she honestly hooked me up with a lady to get raw milk in the springtime, which I'm so excited about, can't wait. <laughs> and she just is really cool. And I hope that one day we get to actually hang out and I can stop being a shy little weirdo who's afraid to talk to anyone. So anyways, go check her out. Anyways, how I got to her is that she did a Valentine's Day loaf the other day and it was so cute. So I really wanna try that today. I have two different loaves that we're going to make. So hopefully one of them will turn out okay. I'm really not the best at scoring and decorating, but we're gonna try it. So I'm just gonna get all set up and hopefully the bread, it's been rising for at least an hour. So it should be ready to go. I've got the oven already warming up and yeah, I'm excited. Actually, another thing that I'm so happy about, I literally just did this, praise the Lord for the inspiration. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy about it. So this dress, I love this dress. I have it in a few colors. It is the Tallulah dress by House of CB. Yes, it's on the pricier side, but it's one of the few dresses I own that I actually think is worth the money because it's really good quality. It's really thick, not see-through. It's layered, it's lined. It has boating as well, which is really nice to kind of give you that feminine shape and puffy sleeves. It's just my favorite dress. But the one thing that I always hated about these dresses, they're so uncomfortable here because they have, I think it's, it's called tall, basically like a tutu inside the puff to give it that extra puffiness. And oh my word, that is so itchy and so annoying. So I'd always get grumpy after wearing this dress for a while because it was just uncomfortable. And I hate the feeling, like I can't wear sweaters. Anything itchy makes me want to just, I can't. So um, I cut out the puff literally 10 minutes ago when I was getting dressed. I was just, you know what? We don't need this anymore. And we don't, I mean, it still looks good. And now my shoulders feel so comfortable. So if any of you have this dress and that annoys you, just cut off the toilet. It's not necessary. Okay, that was random, but it just it feels really good. I'm so happy about it. <laughs> I'm just climbing up on chairs, risking my life so I can set up the camera. <laughs> hey, mama. Yeah. What's up? Chatty boy. Yeah, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> we had this box for like two months. Maui is obsessed with it. It's his favorite little thing to hang out in. Um, and normally when he would hang out in boxes, he'd always pee in it after a couple of days, but he's elastic. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of you. Then the other day I got a package and it was the perfect replacement box. So <laughs> we're trying to slowly make him transition into a fresh one. Yeah, oh, there you go. Test out the new boxy. What do you think? Is that nice? Yeah. You're so handsome. This one is so destroyed. <laughs> yeah, tear up that box. Get cozy. Okay, mommy's gonna bake some bread. And we can go out in the afternoon when daddy gets home, okay? Good boy. Okay, got all the cameras on and we're ready to make some bread. I haven't made bread in like three weeks, I swear, because we don't eat that much bread, so it lasts a long time. So I'm kind of excited. And look at me go. I actually het, I actually heated up. Is that how you say it? Heated up, that sounds wrong. I heated up the Dutch oven. Normally, I don't. I just put it right into the oven cold. You're supposed to heat it up, but I never remember. 
and it always kind of turns out fine but today i actually did so praise the lord <laughs> oh ah, hats okay so the oven was at 500 and now i'm gonna reduce it to 450 before i forget always wear your gloves because this gets hot. Hot, hot, hot is this normal i swear i've never had my parchment paper do this oh no okay i'll get a fresh one I knew it smelled delicious, it smelled like a campfire. <laughs> okay, Ooh. fresh sheet of parchment paper. So I've got my dough that's just been rising in the banatin basket for the last hour or so. Let's pour it in. <laughs> I don't like doing this when it's hot because now I'm just so nervous. Eep. Okay, no burning our hands today. So I was watching, like I said, Tori, and she used a little skewer like this just to roughly draw the heart. And then afterwards she went in and actually scored it. So that's it, I'm gonna try today. Let's cross our fingers, because I really am not an artiste. <gasps> oh my gosh, I knew that would happen, okay. Y'all be careful out there. I swear it's not worth it. The danger. My mouth. Slim Jim. You seem silly. Put a little flower on top so that the art, if you will, <laughs> shows up a little bit more. All right, love number one here, I'll show you a close up. Here's what she looks like. Hopefully it turns out okay. So I'm just gonna carefully put the lid on now and pop it into the oven and we'll see what happens. Okay, now the other loaf that I have is just a sandwich loaf. <laughs> okay, you guys, I don't know why I'm having the hardest time explaining this, but basically this sandwich loaf needs to cook at a lower temperature, so I'm just gonna wait until the artisan loaf is done. Okay, there. <laughs> I said that like three times, I don't know why. Words. So we're gonna leave it for now and we'll decorate it soon. I'm really excited because I want to try painting it. I have seen, and so many people have sent me, videos of girls they paint on to the loaf and it's just so beautiful um and i've never tried it so we're gonna try that today again i saw tori do this she took some beetroot powder and she used that to make the paint so it's a very natural food coloring alternative and look i have it in here and i use my little beeswax wraps it's just the little things you guys yesterday i was making dinner and i had leftover lime and I covered it in another beeswax wrap and I don't know why it would be so happy. <laughs> so anyways, I have it here. It's so pretty. What I used, I used beetroot powder supplements to make this, to, oh, water. <laughs> I used beetroot powder supplements to make this because you can just buy bags of beetroot powder, but I didn't really know when I would use it again or how often. Beetroot powder supplements you can just take as a supplement Beets are obviously really high in antioxidants. They are very, very good for you. That's what gives them the beautiful color. So I figured I'll just take these as a supplement to use up the rest of them versus the powder. But you could also, if you have the powder, throw that into smoothies and food. I see people do that all the time. So I just took these supplements and emptied a few of them into a bowl here. We're gonna add water, mix it up with a paintbrush, and then draw a couple of cute little hearts onto this loaf, and hopefully it works. While we're waiting, let's chat, let's catch up a little bit, and I can tell you some of the things that have been really helping me this week, and I'm probably gonna need to pick up Mama, so he doesn't mean all the whole time. Oh my goodness. Slim dude. Do you want to hug? You can just me want to hug. You can hook me up. Oh, I know. <laughs> what am I gonna do with you? I would just let him out like I usually do when he's going cray cray, but the last week or so, he has been so naughty. He jumps out the fence in like one second. And this crazy guy, I don't want to let him. I don't want you to run away and get lost. I don't want you to get lost. So we'll wait till later to go out, okay? Um. Okay, so the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about and hopefully pray I can explain myself well so that you actually understand what I'm saying and I don't come out like gibberish, like usual. <laughs> um, 
I wanted to talk about anxiety because this is something that I feel like I've made so much progress. Mau Mau. Okay, be good then, promise. I feel like I've made so much progress this week in my anxiety and I'm just so unbelievably thankful and I still have room to grow, of course, but I just wanted to tell you guys what's been working for me. Now, in case you are also struggling with anxiety, I can just provide some guidance and maybe this will also help you. So, the key thing is God. Without question, God is the answer to all of your problems. <laughs> but that's easier said than done. Like, what are the tangible things that you actually need to do in order to let God remove the anxiety from your heart? And so I'm gonna share with you what I've been doing this week. I've already been doing my prayer and my Bible study morning and night. That is so, so helpful, especially my evening prayers. I just feel so connected to God. I go, I fall asleep feeling so full of love and it's just like the best feeling. So I've always, already been doing that for the last, I don't know, a while. And that has really helped. I've already feel like my anxiety has gone way down just from that. But this week alone, the thing that I've been doing that has just feel like really leveled up is praying to Jesus. Now I've told you guys in past videos that I'm still having a hard time believing in Jesus. I love the Bible, like I said, I read it every day, but I'm still not at the point where I absolutely believe that it is historical fact and not just a cute book full of wisdom and metaphors. And I, that's something I'm just working on, okay? But what I've been doing is trying to fake it until I make it and praying to Jesus whether I fully believe or not. And oh my gosh, the word Jesus, I swear it just has, his name has so much power and it's been life-changing for me this week only. Like I just can't even, I'm so thankful that I started to just, I don't know, put a, put aside my, my pride or just my feeling like, I don't know, do you know what I'm talking about? I just am so happy that I was able to just let go of that. What is the word? I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I'm just so happy that regardless of my doubts, I have just been faking it till I make it and praying to Jesus and it has helped me so much. And the prayer that I've been doing the most that I swear has just lifted off so much negative negativity off my heart is asking Jesus, like I've been saying, in the name of Jesus, remove all of this anxiety from me, remove all this negative energy. In the name of Jesus, remove these dark spirits, these demons, free me from this and allow me to live with Jesus' love and joy in my heart and just variations of that. And I swear it's shockingly powerful i'm you just have to try this and try it multiple times throughout the course of this next week especially if you're struggling with anxiety and i wouldn't be surprised if you find too that it just has brought you so much relief like it's crazy it's so cool and i'm just so thankful and the other thing that i've been doing this week as well that has helped tremendously is filling my eyes and my ears with so much godly wisdom. So like I told you guys, I'm doing the Bible, that's totally fine. And I'm also listening to my church sermons on Sunday and Wednesday, really great. But then there's all these other days throughout the week which I am listening to political podcasts and watching crappy TV shows and just not filling myself with God's wisdom. And I notice on those days when I haven't listened to something spiritual and godly, Sorry, the camera cut out. But basically what I'm saying is I notice, like I can tell on the days when I haven't listened to a sermon or a any kind of godly podcast, I can feel that I just don't feel as light and as positive. And when I make that intentional focus to spend sometimes hours, it depends what you're doing. Like if I'm cleaning all day, then I will listen all day. But other days I might only have an hour or two to listen to a podcast, but I am making sure that I at least listen to one godly podcast. And I swear just, Filling yourself up with more knowledge and wisdom about God, oh, it helps so much. So I'm not saying that you can't watch your trash TV shows. I like it just as much as the next. And you can't listen to your political podcast. Again, I love that stuff. But make a conscious effort to listen to at least one hour long godly podcast. And you'll be surprised just filling yourself with more wisdom of the Lord and just constantly reminding yourself, even of things that you already know, to just be constantly reaffirmed and to remember how good God is will relieve you of so much anxiety. It's been so good for me. So that being said, the podcast I wanna to recommend to you guys that I have listened to straight up three and a half times already and I only first listened to it on Monday. It is the Girls Gone Bible podcast episode. Sorry, I'm getting hot, let me take my socks off. I'm always freezing and then I think just talking, I get excited and now I'm just like overheating, okay. I guess it doesn't help that I'm standing next to a friggin' hot oven. Um, yes, the podcast. It's Girls Gone Bible. The title is, oh my gosh, Mama. Please hang on. Mommy can't focus on your meowing like this. I'm so sorry. Okay, 
sorry. I know. I know. So hard to be a Slim Jim. I know. Okay, <laughs> let's try this again. The podcast is Girls Gone Bible and it is called God of Provision. Hey, baby, come on. Um, and it is so, so good. I've only listened to a handful of the Girl Gone, Girls Gone Bible podcast episodes. I only kind of discovered them recently, but so far I'm really loving them and especially this God of Provision one. It is just really spoken to my soul and I've just absolutely loved it. So one thing that I love about these girls is they're really relatable. I really relate to their story of being caught up in the world and they were involved in Hollywood, but I feel like I was involved in something adjacent where it was all about your image and on making money and fame. Like I got really caught up in that like they did and they were able to find God. And so I just really relate to their story. So I love that aspect. They're, they're not perfect. And I just, I resonate with that. Now we're always striving to be more like Jesus and to be perfect, but to see other Christians that were not always these perfect little goody two shoes, I really appreciate just because it's something that I sometimes need a reminder to know that I'm not alone in that. So anyways, I just love them. They're really cute. And this particular episode, I just think is so encouraging. And so I would just suggest that all of you go listen to it. I was doing my morning cleaning on Monday when I first listened to the episode and I paused multiple times to write down little notes of things that just really resonated with me. And the biggest takeaways that I had, number one, God will provide for you, but you must show him that you are worthy. And I think I've said this before, like my, I think I called it like stewarding your God's blessings or something video, but I sometimes just kind of need to be reminded of that. And this has really motivated me this week that God has already blessed me so much and I need to show him that I'm worthy of more blessings and that I'm going to utilize his blessings to further his glory and his kingdom instead of to waste it, buying more clothes and other stupid things that I do not need. And I resonated so much with, I don't, I can never tell who's talking because they both sound the same, they both look the same, I don't know. <laughs> but one of the girls was talking about how she had more clothes than she could ever possibly need and yet still she was praying to God, asking for more and God was just like, girl, you don't need more, I'm not giving you more. And I resonate with that so much. And then she said what she does is she prays to God asking him to remove the desire from her heart to shop and to buy more things that she doesn't need. And so that has been something I've been praying every single day and I just love it. It has been really, really helpful. So the ultimate question is, can God trust you with the gifts and the blessings that he has already given you? And are you using his blessings to bless other people? So that is another thing that I've been working on this week that has already just brought me so much joy and peace and I'm just so excited about it, is trying to consciously use my life to bless others. And that's another thing that really helps with anxiety is to worry less about yourself and to worry more about other people and helping other people, especially if you have social anxiety and that, like it's easier said than done, but trying to focus more on how you can bless the person that you're with instead of constantly worrying about how you are being perceived is going to really help with your anxiety and it's also absolutely what god calls us to do is to care about others and to bless others and to look after others so a couple of things that i've been doing this week and that i'm kind of setting into motion that i'm just so excited about and hopefully next week already i'll be able to provide you with a better update consciously finding ways to bless people so that's not just posting on social media and being vulnerable and cringy and sharing my life to help other girls going through, some, going through something similar, although that is totally a thing that I'm really happy that God gave me the strength to do and to use me, it's just such a blessing. But I also want to bless people in real life, things that I can actually see, bless people in my community. So I have signed up to start volunteering at my local food bank once a week. It's literally only three hours. So I just feel like there's no excuses I can make that work, even though I'm so shy and nervous and I'm scared. So that's gonna happen next week. And hopefully by the next video that I film, I'll be able to tell you how that went. Cross our fingers. Um, the other thing is also bless people financially. One of the things they talked about was tithing and just in general donating. And this is something that I, I had like a big epiphany this week about because when I was doing my OnlyFans, I had enough money to pay all my bills, buy whatever I wanted, and I still had money left over at the end of the month, so I would donate thousands to charity, and it wasn't hard in the slightest for me. It was just like, oh yeah, whatever, take it. Like, I just didn't really think about it, 
And now I've realized that ever since I stopped having that guaranteed money coming in, I have been really stingy and really greedy. And so I am changing that. Starting this week, I am donating every single week to my local food bank, my local pregnancy center, and then also most likely to my church. I really wanna find like the church before I start tithing every single week, but I think I did find it. We're going this Sunday and then I'll think I'll know more and I can tell you next week, but yes. Donating money is just so important. I just really want to use what God has given me to bless other people instead of being, like I said, so selfish and kind of holding it all to myself. And because money is so uncertain for me right now, it's very easy for me to have that as an excuse, but I don't want that to be the case anymore. I want to bless other people. That brings me so much joy. And again, it is what God calls us to do. So those are things that I'm starting to do that also have just released so much released relieved me of so much anxiety and i'm just feeling so at peace this week it's just like the best feeling so i'm doing all of that despite how scary it might be because i can be at times but i know this is what call god calls me to do so i'm just trying not to even overthink it and just to be obedient to god in every single thing whether i always want to do it or not is beyond the point okay i have like so many notes here but they're so random and confusing i don't even know but I think the last point I wanted to make and that they said in the podcast that really resonated with me is to seek first the kingdom of God and then everything else will fall into place. This is something that I have absolutely found in my own life just in the last six months, giving it all up and giving it to God and saying, you do whatever you need to do to me and with me, Father, and I will just go along with it. No matter how uncertain it might be, I trust him. And yeah, so that's all really. I've just been praying to God this whole week to just help me to be obedient to you because there are so many things that God has called me to do and i am trying my best but i am falling short every single day so i'm really praying with such strong fervor and earnest father please help me to just be obedient to do what you call me to do because i know that god has made certain promises to me and i know everything is going to be okay but it's not just gonna magically happen i have to put in the work i have to do what he calls me to do and so just having that i don't know kind of just really strong faith that everything is going to work out and that all i need to do is the next thing that god tells me to do has brought me so much peace this week and i'm just feeling on fire for the lord thank you jesus <laughs> like seriously it's just so beautiful so one last thing before we can start cutting our loaf wow i really milked that 20 minutes <laughs> just talking oh my gosh i'm all loud enough okay this i just think is going to bring you so much blessings so i have to read it to you this was the very last segment of the girls gone bible episode that i told you about they basically just said a prayer to god that we can use in our own lives and i wrote it down because i thought it was really beautiful so i'm just going to read it to you guys as well and if i remember i'll put it in the description box or something in case you want to copy it and print it out and read it to yourself every day as a prayer prompt i think people call it so I'm just going to read it to you. I think it's so beautiful and I just think it will bless you. God, I approach you with a heart overflowing with thanks to your steadfast love and provision. Lord, I pray that you continue to provide for all of my needs in accordance with your glorious riches. Lord, bless me with your wealth so that I might bless others. Help me to always remember your goodness and consistency and to have complete faith in you. Oh, so good. <laughs> Dear God, I ask for financial awareness and discernment. Assist me in spending my money sensibly and in a way that glorifies you. Show me how to take care of the things that you have given me and correctly lead me. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> I don't understand why am I like this. <laughs> Provide me with financial knowledge to empower myself to create money and support my family. Father, I come before you for debt forgiveness and monetary freedom. Lord, I beg you to forgive my debts and assist me in achieving financial freedom. Help me manage my money wisely and remember that I am a borrower, not a lender. Lord, I trust that all things are possible for you. I appreciate your steadfastness in my life. Anyways, definitely go listen to the episode because they talk about different Bible verses and reflect on how that and how that shows that God is a God of provision and that he will take care of you. It will just bring you so much peace in your life. I love it. So yeah. Okay, let's cut our sandwich loaf now and try to make it look cute. We'll see, we'll see. I've never done this before, the whole painting on the dough thing, but it looks fun, so we'll try it out. Okay, 
I'm straight up going to look at Tori's post because the loaf that she cut was so pretty. I honestly just want to copy it. Oh, she's so talented. People who are so good at cutting loaves, I just can't even. Start by flowering the loaf. <laughs> can't help but feel like a princess every time I do that. It's just so fun. Okay. Mm, look at that juicy dough. All right, we're going in. Pray for me. Okay, I've never done this before, but in her video, she snipped little pieces of the bread to give it this really pretty detail. And oh my gosh, it's like cutting Play-Doh. This is super satisfying. Okay, I'm gonna be one of those girls and run upstairs and get my pretty gold scissors for the video. <laughs> Don't judge me, okay? <laughs> I can't help it. Okay, this is looking super cute. Now for the fun part, we're going to add a little bit of water to our beetroot and see if we can paint some hearts on top. Mmm, looks like chocolate. Like red chocolate, I wanna eat it. Okay, moment of truth. Um, I'm actually so stoked about this. This looks so good. I really didn't think I'd be able to do this, but it's cute. Look at it. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the oven and we will report back in half an hour and see how it turns out. It might not look as good. I feel like painting always looks better before you put it in the oven and it never looks as good after, but I actually have no idea because I've never done this before, so we'll find out. Okay, you guys, we have three minutes until the bread is done, but I think that should be just enough time to make our other little mini thing that I wanted to do, do with you today which is make, oh my gosh, it smells so good. Make some homemade vanilla extract. Oh, so I have some fresh, no, these are dried, I guess, vanilla beans here. And all we're gonna do is infuse it with vodka and then you pop it in your cupboard and leave it for six months, shaking once a week. And then you'll have vanilla extract that you can use in all of your autumn baking, which will be so much fun. I happen to already have both of these ingredients hanging around because I was experimenting with doing something like this for a product for Milkmaid that I ended up deciding against. So I already have these hanging around. So this is a perfect way to make healthy, natural vanilla extract instead of a lot of the sketchy ones that you can buy at the grocery store that have a lot of fillers and just unnecessary ingredients. And it looks so easy. So all we're gonna do is take our dried vanilla beans. Now you don't need to slice the vanilla bean in half or anything. You just want to slice through the middle to open it up. Ah, okay, be careful. Oh my gosh, the bread looks so good. <laughs> Look at these beautiful, oh my gosh. I did not expect this to turn out that well. Even the heart loaf looks so pretty. Oh my gosh, stunning. And this one, <gasps> look at it. Wow, you guys, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I'll leave a link in the description box in case you wanna go to my blog. I have the actual recipe that I use to make my sourdough. And I also have a sourdough 101, <laughs> sourdough 101 YouTube video as well in case you're totally new to the world of sourdough. I will never pretend to be an expert on it because I am not, but every once in a while I have a successful loaf and today was one of those days that I'm pretty darn happy about it. <laughs> Okay, back to the vanilla extract. So we've got our sliced beans and now I'm just gonna put them in a jar. This is a cute little bottle I got from the dollar store ages ago to use for photo shoots back in my fashion influencer days. It's finally gonna come in handy again. So I'm just gonna pop it in here. Any jar will work. And the recipe does say if the beans are too long for your jar, you can always cut them in half. But mine fit perfectly, so I'm probably just gonna leave it. And now all we're gonna do is pour some vodka on top. So make sure you get yourself a little funnel so you don't make a mess like I always do, funnel or not. And this is, um, what's it called, Everclear. So this is a really, really strong vodka. I'm pretty sure it's like 80 or 90%. Again, something I bought from Milkmaid that I will never ever drink. So <laughs> I'm really glad that I can actually get some use out of it in the end. The recipe that I'm following says to use 80 proof vodka, which this is, or you can also use bourbon 
brandy, or even rum. So whatever you got, try it out. We'll find out what happens. So now I'm just gonna pour it on top. <laughs> oh my gosh. How did I ever take shots of vodka while I was a teenager? Like disgusting. Could never know. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now over time, again, we're gonna leave this in a cupboard for six months. So during that time, the liquid vodka should turn brown and start to smell like vanilla and then we can use it in baking. So like I said, leave this in the cupboard, shake it once a week or whenever you remember and just absolutely make sure that the beans are always submerged and nothing is showing at the top. Otherwise you can run into mold issues and things like that. Um, yeah, that's all. So I will update you guys when is six months, March, April, May, June, July, August, so September pretty much right in time for your autumn baking. So we'll try it out then and I will let you guys know if it worked, but it should, we'll see. <laughs> I have so many jars full of random things in my cupboard. <laughs> Lena, hey baby, look at mama. What are you doing? You waiting for daddy to come home? Is that comfy? Yeah. What a good boy. You're so handsome. <laughs> Okie dokie. The last thing on the agenda today is to make some homemade potato chips. I am so excited to try this out, see if it works. I love potato chips just as much as the next gal and my husband especially really likes them as well. But as we all know, they are so bad for you and they're not inherently, like they don't have to be bad for you. The reason why you wanna stay away from conventional potato chips, at least majority of the time, is because they're all cooked in one seed oil or another. And the more research I do on seed oils, the more horrified I get. They are so bad for you for so many reasons. So we're gonna fry our own potato chips in a healthy oil today. I'm actually going to use ghee, which I am loving lately. It's basically, they call it clarified butter. So it's butter, but with all of the milk solids and everything else removed. So you can fry your potatoes in ghee. You can also fry them in tallow. That's also really healthy. You know how much I love tallow. If you want some for your face, then you can check out my small business, The Milk Made Supply Co. Um, so you can do ghee, you can do tallow. You could also do coconut oil as well. I mean, there might be other options, probably lard. I bet you would be really tasty and also good for you as well. Basically, you wanna use a saturated fat when you're frying anything. If you use a polyunsaturated fat, a PUFA, which is all vegetable oils, it's going to oxidize and then fill your body with free radicals, which are just gonna cause a lot of problems. So, anyways. Long story short, I'm really excited. Hopefully they turn out okay. They seem really easy to make. Of course, it's not as convenient as buying potato chips at the store, but to be able to eat potato chips guilt-free and know that you're not harming your body, worth it. So you're gonna need a mandolin slicer. <laughs> Definitely do not get lazy and don't use your mandolin. Go find it from your storage or your basement or whatever you have it hiding because you want all the potatoes to be cut thinly so that they're actually resemble an actual potato chip that you'd get at the grocery store. So I have mine set already to the thinnest setting. And then you're gonna need some potatoes. So I just have two because I don't really know how well this is gonna turn out so I'm not making a huge batch, but um, make as many as you want. So I have them, they're already peeled and now I'm going to slice them into super tiny little potato chips, I don't know, <laughs> slices. Okay, so I'll be right back, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna be safe and put on the glove the mandolin comes with. I don't know, they all come with a glove, but I'm the clumsiest lady on earth, so I'm about to lose a finger if I don't put this on. Wow. Oh, I don't even think you guys can see, but this one potato has made so many chips just because of how thinly I sliced it that I'm probably not gonna do the second potato. I mean, this is crazy. I'll just keep the second one since I already peeled it and use it for dinner tonight or something. Because that is already a lot of chips, a lot of chips. 
Okay, step two, we're going to now soak our beautiful little potato chippies in cold ice water for 30 minutes. Apparently this is to remove the starchiness and these are definitely very starchy. Like the amount of sticky residue on my mandolin that I'm gonna clean in a second is crazy. So I'm gonna pour these all into my beautiful big bowl and then just cover it with water and then I'll add some ice cubes as well. Okay, there we go. Kind of looks like sauerkraut or something, but we're gonna leave that now for 30 minutes. Got the timer set, so I'll be back soon. Okay, I've come upstairs real quickly because we still have like 15 minutes. And I wanted to tell you guys about something that has been such a blessing to me. Pretty much this last week, I finally figured it out. So I don't know if any of you guys noticed, hopefully you didn't, but you probably did. I have been really struggling with really, really chapped, flaky lips. I don't know how long, but it's been a while and it's been horrible. I cannot leave them like that to save my life. I have to peel them. So then inevitably my lips are just constantly bleeding. It was so painful. It was just the worst. And I couldn't figure it out like why for the life of me. I thought maybe it was just cause it was winter. Um, I also thought that maybe I was having some kind of nutritional deficiency cause I've read that certain deficiencies can cause chopped lips. So I was really trying to rack my brain, trying to figure it out. I could not, nothing was working and then Last week, I discovered this and I'm so happy about it. And it literally, my lips were smooth and beautiful in two days since discovering this. So what was actually causing my chopped lips, you guys, was my toothpaste. I have been using a Crest toothpaste for, I don't know how long, probably ever since my lips started getting chopped was about the same timeline. My husband is just what he used and I ran out of mine. So then I just started using his. There is plenty of reasons why I should not be using that toothpaste regardless of the whole chopped lip thing. There's just so many sketchy ingredients in there, really not good for you. Um, but I just, you know, I got lazy and I just was using it. And then, thank the Lord, I read that the SLS sodium lauryl sulfate in that toothpaste and so many other conventional toothpastes can cause chopped lips. And it started to make so much sense to me because it was only my bottom lips that were really chapped. My top lip was totally fine. And then now I notice as I'm brushing, all the toothpaste collects on my bottom lip. That's just kind of how it naturally happens. So no wonder the SLS was totally messing with my lips. So I swapped my toothpaste and I'm not exaggerating in two days, <laughs> bubble. in two days, my lips are smooth again. So I had to just come on here and let you guys know in case you are also struggling with chapped lips, this might be the total solution for you. So this again, always sounds like an ad. I just get excited about things. This is not an ad at all. This is just a toothpaste that I found on Amazon. Any SLS free toothpaste will be fine, I would assume. You want it to be SLS free, bonus points if it's fluoride free, but definitely SLS free. So this is the Hello toothpaste and it works the same. It's still really good at cleaning my teeth and everything, but my lips are smooth again. I'm so happy about it. So I use this and then I also use my, it's too tiny for you to really see, but it's my tallow lip balm that I made for Milkmaid Supply Co. This is tallow and beeswax and then also has mint infused jojoba oil and vanilla and it just smells delicious. Peppermint and mint, oh, I could just eat it. It's my favorite combination <laughs> ever. And it also is so nourishing for your lips. So this combination has taken my lips from painful, flaky to beautiful and soft again and it's so exciting. <laughs> So anyways, I feel like that was kind of random, but I literally just couldn't believe it and I had to just tell you in case it might help any of you who are struggling with it too. Yes, it could just be that it's winter and it's dry, but it could also be something as simple as swapping your toothpaste. So try it out. Let me know if it works for you. Hey, Bobo, what's me on about? Do you have your Bali? Where'd it go? <laughs> well, go ahead soon, okay? I know, it looks so nice out. Look at the sunshine. Beautiful day. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> I see her Bali. I knew it. When she goes all crazy, it's because she's got her ball. You want me to throw it for you, Wabs? <laughs> this was from a slipper that I had ages ago, and I cut the ball off, and ever since, she's been obsessed. Sorry, it's not focusing, but she... <laughs> She loves this ball more than any other ball that you could buy. It's specifically the slipper ball that she loves. Want me to throw it for you, pretty girl? Yeah, okay, watch out for the tripods though, eh? Yeah, I know, it's kind of in the way. Okay, ready? Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, I did a bad throw. Mommy sucks at throwing, I'm sorry. I tried, should I do one more? Let's see one more down the hall, yeah. Well, hold on, don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> what a bobolene. So perfect. <laughs> what a little Lena. timer just went off so I've added a bunch of ghee to the frying pan this is the one that I'm using I really want to try to mix myself so it's just clarified butter so surely you could do that I don't know I'll have to look into that it might be something we can try in the future because this is kind of expensive and I feel like it would just be so cheap to make it yourself I don't know anyways I added the ghee to the frying pan and we're just gonna let it melt. We want the oil to reach 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got my, um, what's this? Temperature reader, thermometer. <laughs> I got my thermometer here, so I will use that to check and we'll know when it's ready. While that's warming up, I'm going to now drain the potatoes and rinse them in a colander. Then lay the potatoes onto some paper towel and dry them. And then put your dry ones into a little plate ready to fry. Okay, the ghee has reached 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I think earlier I said 300, but it's 350. And I put on my apron because I am certain that this is just gonna make a big old mess. And now we're just gonna add a couple of pieces of the potato slices and see what happens. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Okay, while they're simmering, I got a drying rack and I've lined it with some paper towel. And it shouldn't take long, actually some of them already look really crispy. Grab a slotted spoon and once they're ready, we'll just scoop them out, pop them on the paper towel to soak up some of the extra grease and yeah. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It smells like McDonald's fries. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. And that's with no salt because the ghee has salt mixed in, but you can always sprinkle on some salt, pepper, whatever seasoning you like. Oh my gosh. Homemade chips. This is so cool. Okay, I'll show you the final results. They are so so delicious. I don't know how long these will last because there's no preservatives or anything, right? So I feel like this is the kind of thing you kind of got to eat today. But like I said, this is healthy. It's potatoes and ghee. There's nothing bad about this. You probably just want to limit your portion size, I guess, a little bit, but it's so good. So delicious. So that's all for this video. I guess I will say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. I will leave links to the recipes I followed, any of the equipment I used that I can think of to link, and I will link the Girls Gone Bible podcast episode, and I don't know, anything else that might be relevant, check the description box below. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Gwen the Milkmaid. I'm especially active on Instagram. I'm always posting on my Instagram story. So if you want to hang out with me during the week, that's where you can go. And if you have any questions or anything like that, DM me on Instagram. That's where I am most likely to see your message. Um, I guess that's everything. Check out the Milkmaid Supply Co. If you're in the market for cutie little handmade in Canada linen apron or grass-fed and finished tallow balm for your face. 
yeah, I love you lots. Hope you have an amazing week and I will see you next Saturday. Bye.